the pressure tracing of our arterial line waveform can give us additional insight into the things that may be going on with our patient. We can use these waveforms to help identify problems that they may be having. In this lesson, we're going to take a look at some of the common changes that we can see in our arterial line waveforms. So let's go ahead and get started. All right, welcome back to another video lesson from ICU Advantage. This is Eddie Watson, and my goal is to give you guys the confidence to succeed in the ICU by making complex critical care topics easy to understand. I truly hope that I'm able to do just that, and if I am, I do invite you to subscribe to the channel below. Make sure you hit that bell icon though so you never miss out when I release a new lesson. To test your knowledge at the end of this lesson, head over to icuadvantage.com or follow the link down in the lesson description. Check your learning while also being entered into weekly gift card drawing. Also, don't forget that the notes for this lesson, as well as all the others, are available to the YouTube and Patreon members, along with some other great benefits as well. You can find links to both of those in the lesson description. Now, in the last lesson, we looked at the arterial line waveform and broke down what is happening throughout the entire pressure tracing. So this gave us a good look at what the normal tracing looked like. In addition to that, we also talked about the impact of dampening on our waveform and what that looked like and how we would test for it. Knowing the normal and how to ensure our waveforms are accurate for our patients are key to being able to identify changes or abnormalities in our patient's pressure tracing. All right, so the first group of changes that we're most often going to see are going to have to do with different arrhythmias that our patients have. I will link to a playlist of lessons that I've done reviewing the arrhythmias up above, but changes in the way the heart is beating will manifest as changes in our arterial line waveforms. And so the first arrhythmia that I want to talk about is actually going to be with atrial fibrillation. So as you know, with AFib, the heart is beating regularly as the atria fibrillate and inconsistent signals pass through to the ventricle. As a result, we're also going to see an irregular pattern in our waveform. In addition to this irregular pattern, due to the frequency of some of the beats that we see, we do see a reduction in cardiac output, particularly with these more frequent beats. This is really a result of the decreased filling time and thus decreased preload for that particular beat. Um, this is going to manifest itself in the waveform by having a decreased size of that wave. As you can see in this example here, when the heart rate speeds up, we often will see a decrease in the size of both the systolic upstroke and the peak systolic pressure, and this is going to be due to that decrease in cardiac output. All right, the next arrhythmia that I want to talk about is going to be supraventricular tachycardia or SVT. So with SVT, we're going to see a similar phenomenon as we do with AFib. Now, the rate will often be relatively stable with less fluctuation as we see with AFib, but we will see a reduction in cardiac output as that rate increases. Once again, this is going to lead to a decrease in systolic upstroke and peak systolic pressure in our waveform. We typically can see sustained very fast rates with SVT and thus can really see a reduction in our patient's blood pressure as a result manifested by the diminished waveforms. So in the example here, you can see that the patient enters an SVT rhythm, we see a noticeable drop in the pressure tracing and see it decline further as it gets faster. All right, for the next arrhythmia, let's actually talk about premature ventricular contractions or PVCs. For PVCs, we really need to think about what it is that's happening. We have a beat that's now originated in the ventricle. So this means no atrial kick to aid preload, as well as an often slower propagation of the depolarization, meaning a slower contraction. Together, these lead to a reduction in cardiac output. This reduced cardiac output will be manifested by reduced pressure tracings. So in the example here, you can see the PVC and corresponding waveform has this markedly reduced systolic upstroke, as well as it's going to add some irregularity to the rhythm that we see here. Now, a variation of this is going to have to do when our patients are in bigeminy. And this is essentially when we have those alternating normal beats with PVCs. So as I just described, we are going to see that reduction in the waveform with each one of those PVCs. So in bigeminy, you're going to see an alternating pattern of high and low pressure tracings as I have shown here. 
All right, the next abnormality that I wanna talk about is gonna be our premature atrial contractions or PACs. Now with PACs, we'll also see the irregularity due to this premature beat. Unlike PVCs though, we still have that atrial beat preceding the narrow QRS, meaning good preload and a quick strong contraction. Now, we can see PACs that are originating from different parts of the atria, which can have some small impact on how well the atria contract. For the most part though, this is not gonna be something noticeable in our pressure tracing. And so as you can see in the example here, we have the irregularity from the premature beat, yet we see no major difference in the arterial waveform. All right, so those were the different changes that we can see with arrhythmias. Let's actually talk about some other changes that we can see in our waveforms. Now, the first of these I wanna talk about and also the most common one you're gonna see are gonna be changes from our respiratory pattern. Now, there's naturally some variation due to changes in intrathoracic pressure during the respiratory cycle. Now, this can potentially be an indication that your patient may need fluids as I did discuss in this previous lesson here, which I'll link to up above, but we see these changes manifesting as in increasing and decreasing waveforms as the respiratory cycle changes. Now we can measure these changes with either stroke volume variation, our SVV, or pulse pressure variation, our PPV. And when we see this cycling pattern with changes that are more than 10 millimeters of mercury, we actually refer to this as pulsus paradoxus. Now this same pulsus paradoxus pattern can be the result of pericardial tamponade, constrictive pericarditis, as well as exacerbations of asthma and COPD. Now, depending on if your patient is spontaneously breathing or on the ventilator, that it's actually gonna change the type of pattern that we see. So let's go ahead and put up a tracing of our patient's respiratory cycle to really have as a reference as we talk about these. And the first example of these respiratory changes that I'm gonna put up here is gonna be that of a spontaneously breathing patient. So here, as the patient breathes in, the intrathoracic pressure drops, leading to an increase in cardiac output and thus the size of the arterial waveform. During expiration, the pressure increases and we thus see a decrease in cardiac output and thus the arterial waveform as well. And you can see this cycling up and down throughout the respiratory cycle. Now, the opposite is true when you have your patient on the vent. During inspiration, positive pressure now is being pushed into the lungs, thus increasing intrathoracic pressure and then reducing the size of the waveform. Then during expiration, intrathoracic pressure drops, leading to an increase in the waveform. And you can see the difference here when we compare these two waveforms, spontaneous versus ventilated patients. They're essentially doing the same thing, just at opposite points in the respiratory cycle. All right, so the next abnormal waveform that I wanna talk about is actually something that we call pulsus alternans. And this is characterized by alternating beats of larger and smaller pressures. And here, we're gonna distinguish this from bigeminy, which we talked about has the exact same thing. We're gonna distinguish this by the lack of changes in our ECG tracing. So here you can see the normal ECG tracing throughout, yet we still have the alternating beats on our pulse pressures. And this is an abnormal change in our patient's arterial line waveform that's gonna be the result of left ventricular dysfunction. Now, this can be the result of aortic stenosis, heart failure, or even the impairment of anesthesia on the sympathetic nervous system for patients who have left ventricular dysfunction. So even though the ECG is regular, we're seeing this difference between weaker and stronger beats manifesting as smaller and larger waveforms. All right, and then the next abnormal waveform I wanna talk about is something that we call pulsus bisferens. And this is an abnormal pattern where we're gonna see a double systolic peak. Now, this is usually going to be the result of aortic insufficiency or aortic regurgitation, but it can also be the result of hypertrophic cardiomyopathy. Now, for patients that do have severe aortic insufficiency, we also will see a decrease in diastolic blood pressure as the blood flows back into the ventricle. Now, the reason that we're seeing this double systolic peak is that this is the result of having both a systolic pressure wave as well as a reflective wave coming right back. Now, this is either going to be the result of the insufficient valve or in the cases of hypertrophic cardiomyopathy due to the slowing obstruction of outflow during mid to late systole. And so again, this here was pulsus bisferens. 
And then finally, the last abnormality that I want to talk about is going to be for patients with aortic stenosis. So with aortic stenosis, we have this aortic valve that's just not fully functioning, and thus it's going to be restricting flow. We see this manifest in our pressure waveform by a slowing of that systolic upstroke. Along with that, we're also going to see a diminished size of the waveform, as well as a less defined or even absent dichrotic notch. All right, and so that was a quick review of some of the changes and abnormalities that we can come across either commonly or not so commonly with our arterial waveform. Again, from the previous lesson, you got a good understanding of what the normal waveform should look like and what that all composed of, and then now we can kind of dissect that with some of the other changes that can impact what we're seeing on that pressure tracing. So as always, thank you guys so much for watching. If you enjoyed this lesson, leave it a like as it really helps YouTube know to show this lesson to even more and more people. I really enjoy all the comments that you guys leave and I do try to respond to just about everybody. If you haven't already, consider subscribing to always catch the latest videos as I release them every week. And if you do wanna learn more about this topic or really anything related to critical care, head down to the video description and I have links to some of my favorite books on the subject there. Finally, a shout out to the awesome YouTube and Patreon channel members. Your support truly means the world to me and a big thank you to you guys. Now, if you'd be interested in showing additional support for this channel and want to get some of the extra content that only the members receive, then you can either join the YouTube membership down below or head on over to the Patreon page and check out some of the ways that you can show support over there. Don't worry if you don't though because your support and just watching these videos and sharing them with other people is greatly appreciated as well. And YouTube did also recently activate this new feature where you can give thanks if you did find this lesson extremely useful and you wanted to do that as well. Alright, well make sure that you guys stay tuned for the next lesson in this series and until I see you for the next lesson, here's a couple of great videos to check out right here. Thanks so much for watching, have a wonderful day.